Hi there everybody, I took my dose of radioactive iodine about four and a half hours ago. So far I feel okay, I definitely feel tired, and I have a very dry mouth and eyes. Um, a slight metallic taste has started coming in. I did end up taking some anti-nausea medication, more so preemptively. Um, simply because I have a pretty bad fear of vomiting, so, you know, I just wanted to kind of be on the safe side. Um, I have been trying to drink water and use the bathroom really regularly, staying on top of all that, but yeah, so far, um, we're a few hours into my first day, and if anything happens, I will talk about it a little bit, but otherwise, so far, nothing to be afraid of, um... It's definitely really unnerving. When I went in, they were very, very nice. I actually really like our nuclear medicine department. They're very kind and very friendly. Um, but I went in and I was sat off to the side until they were ready for me. They took me back into this teeny tiny little room and there's a big heavy metal jar and it did take a little bit of effort to lift off the lid. And there's inside a vial and I wore gloves and they said tip the vial back don't touch it drink water write it down and then they stood me over by the Geiger counter it went off and they're like you're good and so they sent me home and I drove back by myself and now I am isolating in my half of the apartment where I have a bathroom and a bedroom um, and yeah, I'm just kind of following as many of the rules as I can find, but I will say the most frustrating process um, or part of this process has been the fact that everything I read seems to contradict the last thing I read. So I don't really know what the right answers are for this in terms of like, how do you isolate effectively? How do you ensure that this particular treatment goes as smoothly and as um, well as it possibly can? It's been really frustrating, and I don't know if other people who have gone through this also felt frustrated, but like, everything I read contradicts the other things that I read. So I just feel like, um, I feel like I'm left blowing in the wind trying to make decisions, but like not being an expert, obviously, in nuclear medicine or endocrinology or any of this. Um, so I think that's been my biggest frustration, is like, I just don't feel like I've had much help in terms of navigating this, partially because like the content out there just, it almost makes it worse. <laughs> so if you're currently preparing, um, yeah, I mean, for example, I'm seeing like, like sour candies can be controversial. Some people say, don't use sour candies because they activate your salivary glands unnecessarily, which means that you're gonna, you know, make it more likely to develop salivary cancer. And then I've got other people who are like, if you don't use sour candy to activate your salivary gland, get calcifications and like blah, blah, blah. So it's like even like everything, everything that could have an argument made against it or for it seems like it has an argument made against it and for it <laughs> because I'm lucky enough to have a place to like pretty easily isolate and I work from home I'm just gonna probably isolate for longer than I really need um but then yeah in about a week I'll have my full body scan it's weirdly enough and I don't know if other people have had this happen uh, I ended up with an acute kidney injury um and we can't quite figure out why but my endocrinologist said that uh in some cases people get uh, an acute kidney injury or an AKI after removing their thyroid and then stopping thyroid hormones. So um, he's thinking that it should go back to normal, um, but we will repeat the creatinine tests and my uh, kidney function tests later. I'll let you guys know about that because um, it definitely was kind of scary. I don't have any symptoms of it. I, I like feel fine other than like just really fatigued. Um, but yeah, it kind of happened and it surprised me on my blood work. Um, so. I don't know if you guys have had that happen, but if you have, let me know how it worked out for you, um, and if it was transient or not. I'm hoping mine is. I've never had problems with my kidneys. My function's always been really good, so it kind of like, le out of left field. So, check in number one. Day one. Hi everybody, it's day two of radioactive iodine ablation. It's about like noon, but 
as you can see like I'm still very like swelled up it might not be super obvious but I actually feel it it's like around my eyes you can see there's like a pulling um, I am assuming it's probably something to do with being hypothyroid um, but yeah it's it looks like I haven't been awake for a while but I have been I've been up since probably eight or nine um, but it's it's just not going down so I do feel very puffy especially around my eyes and my my mouth and my neck um, I don't have any burning or any pain but I do feel um, a pressure almost just like um, after my surgery I had tape it almost feels like there's tape back on there so it's not painful or anything um, I haven't had really any problem with nausea, uh, but I prophylactically took uh, Compazine um, just to make sure that I do eat so I keep as many of my normal bodily functions working as possible. Um, I've been trying to uh, calculate the amount of water that I drink by using a water bottle that's 500 milliliters, so I just kind of keep using that as my reference point and trying to pay attention to my urine output. Um, largely been okay. I've washed my sheets. I've showered a couple times just to like really minimize any risk. Um, I was even feeling so well yesterday as to walk on my treadmill for like half an hour, which was nice. Um, I'm an active person, so to be down for the count is really hard. Um, but yeah, overall, I feel okay. I was really expecting more physical sensations, but really I'm just kind of like feeling a little bit fatigued. Honestly, the swelling is the most noticeable thing. Um, and it's, it's really weird. I just feel like, I just feel like I look like I just woke up. I don't know if any of you guys have had it happen to you, but otherwise, I'm largely feeling okay. Um, trying to keep myself busy with work and stuff like that. We're halfway through day two already, and uh, yeah, like I said yesterday, if anything comes up, uh, I'll let you know, but we're on day two, and it's going okay. Hello, hello. So today is day three of my REI. So I feel fine. I'm feeling tired. I slept a lot last night, but um, overarchingly, a lot of the swelling is down and I feel um, a little bit less cloudy. Um, I definitely had a little bit more nausea today, actually, funny enough. It wasn't like nausea, it was like a queasy, like, ugh, I don't wanna eat, I just kind of wanna like not. Um, but overall, I feel good. I have a little bit more tightness in my neck today, um, but no burning, no pain, no irritation or anything like that. So overall, I think it's going well. I am um, still on the no iodine diet. There was actually a lot of confusion about that. So I was talking to my endocrinologist about when I should start taking Levo and when I should get off the iodine diet. And he was like, well, I think you should wait until after you get your full body scan. And I was like, ooh, I've never heard of that before. So I called my nuclear medicine folks and they were like, we've never heard that either. Um, we'll leave it up to you. So today is the 8th and then my full body scan will be on the 13th and then I can start my Levo on the 14th. Obviously I'm gonna stay isolated for a little bit longer just out of an abundance of caution, but yeah. Overall, experience itself has been okay. Um, just confusion with my doctors. It's just been like this the entirety of my thyroid cancer journey of like hearing specialists say one thing and another specialist say another and trying to pick through whatever um, material that I can find to read, which is limited at best. Um, I'm actually shocked at how little material there is about thyroid cancer um, as a disease and at, for management and all that. I also even called my vet to ask them about what I should do regarding isolating from the cats. And she's like, I literally don't know. <laughs> we have no information really about that. Um, there's like some information about the cat getting radioactive iodine because they too can get this treatment, but not really too much about the um, effects of like how radiation 
in a human being really affects your pets. She told me to follow the guidelines for avoiding kids, um, so the like pediatric guidelines, so that's what I'm going to do. So hopefully um, this just goes over soon because the level of confusion I have is just exhausting me mentally. So for anybody who's going through this and you feel lost and kind of pulled in a lot of directions, me too. Um, hang in there and I think my only piece of advice is like try your best to make good judgment calls based off of the information that you find and that you are given because from my perspective I've read a lot and I can't find any really hard um, um, averages for information it, it really is like all over the place it runs the gambit I've been reading some stuff that's like 20 days in isolation I've read some where it's like no days in isolation um, it really seems to depend on like your dosage and how you are and what your relationship to your nuke med and endocrinologist all is and so it's like a mess um, so good luck but if you have any questions and you want like to talk maybe in the comments you guys can discuss your own experiences with this um, and we can try and find some common grounds or like maybe collect some information. I know thyka.org is one of the places that I've gotten a lot of information so I will be linking um, information that I've found really useful in the description box for just reading. It's not like medical advice but um, it was like kind of where you can go and read a bunch of different people's opinions and um, experiences and that's been helping me to kind of like figure out what my treatment plan might look like in terms of like the recovery stuff so like this kind of thing this weird like I'm not actively being babysat or anything it's just like what do you do in these quiet times where you're waiting for the next part of the process um yeah it's wild it's the wild west out here so stay strong <laughs> and i'll check in with you guys tomorrow so it is day seven of my radiation i ended up going in for my full body scan and i will say the last few days have largely been uneventful which is why i didn't bother recording anything um the biggest thing is just being in isolation i did end up maintaining that isolation um, up until about last night i did hang out a little bit with my partner and the cats but i kept six feet away and i still wore like little booties and my gloves so i'm trying my best to be really careful but i did end up going out and just saying hi to everybody um but today i ended up going in to the nuclear medicine clinic and said hello they set me all up and the first round of scans i had actually took about 30 minutes it was surprisingly long and i was just strapped in to a little machine that gets rather close to your face and they slowly moved me from head to toe where they were collecting data points um, regarding where my iodine was taken up um, so i'm waiting on all these results the next that they did was a circular image. So of my chest, they went and used the same machine, which is rather slow, and it slowly moved around me to calculate um, how my radiation was distributed, I guess, in my chest. And then the last thing they did in this room was um, a really fast CT. Comparatively, the CT was like a blast. It went right down into the tube, that was kind of scary because it's very claustrophobic and a little bit loud um but the whirring went around me they took i think probably maybe head and neck or at least neck and chest and they pulled me out and then they moved me to another room where i did uh i think they said it was a keyhole keyhole scan of some sort of just my thyroid area just of my um thyroid bed so I have not heard anything from these scans yet, but the guys over there said I would probably hear back from the radiologist who was going to be reading all the scans later tonight about whether or not they saw anything suspect on my scans. Um, what I understand is this was a series of scanning processes to determine whether or not anything was left behind by the surgery, um, the amount of microscopic potential for metastasis, and uh, any other metastasis that they didn't see on my head and neck CT before the surgery, uh, like bone and lung metastasis. Um, 
all in all, it took about two hours, two and a half hours. So I was surprised that it was that long. Um, but otherwise, they were very nice. They gave me hot blankets. They were super kind. We chatted. Um, it was it was an overall fine experience. So I can't complain. But yeah, it's good to kind of come home and realize that I get to start my Labo tomorrow and hopefully start feeling better in the next couple weeks and um, finally breathe. It's been a long, long year of scans and biopsies and surgeries and blood work and questions and confusion and radiation and totally new things for me. Um, I'm still a little bit puffy, um, but I'm hoping that'll go away once I start taking my medication again. <sighs> Overall, I have a lot of like emotional responses to what's gone on over the last year. And I'm sure I'll figure out a way to communicate that with you guys eventually, but at the moment I just kind of want to enjoy having made it through a majority of the hardest stuff. Um, thank you guys for always being so kind to me, and if you are waiting on these treatments, let me tell you, um, you'll be fine. They'll be okay. I was so scared of all of this stuff beforehand. I had so much anxiety so many questions, so much confusion. I've had to really trust that like, in not knowing, I won't make a mistake. Meaning that despite the fact that it seems like nobody really knows what they're doing at any point in this process, I just have to trust that the choices I make are as well informed as possible. I tried to read I tried to stay up to date on things, I tried to ask questions of all the doctors and nurses that I've met, and I tried to accumulate as much information as I possibly could to try and distill the approach I was going to take to manage this. Um, I think it worked for me, but the scans will tell. <laughs> um, but yeah, stay strong, stay focused advocate for yourself, communicate um, openly with your friends, family, and your medical team, and remember that hopefully this is just a small detour for a very, very long, happy life. Love you all.